So how much money does Grant Horvath make off YouTube and YouTube adjacent avenues? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is a video I'm very interested in making for you guys. It's one that kind of came up to me because, you know, just looking at this dude's channel, opened it up today to see the new Major Cut episode uploaded, which is probably my favorite series on YouTube right now, just because like I love all three of those human beings in that series so, so much. And I like their chemistry and I like watching them play golf. That is going to be my like, after I'm done work, before I go play golf, sit down, watch, just get in the zone, enjoy the crap out of it, video for today. So go check that out. But I happen to just be scrolling through and notice that his last video against Phil is currently sitting at 1.5 million views in seven days. That's right, a video with Grant and a non-YouTuber, not some break the internet YouTube collab, but a non-YouTuber is at 1.5 million views. Just like his one year old, number one ranked nine year old golfer video is at 1.2 million views, and his match against John Rahm is at 1.2 million views. The last major cut at 1.3, 1 million with Bryson Shamble, three club challenge. Like in the last eight videos, Grant has four, five of them over 1 million views. Do you know how crazy that is? Do you know how crazy? Like, I don't think that's ever been done by a golf YouTuber or a golf YouTube group or anyone. I really don't. I don't think any golf, any person that's ever uploaded a golf YouTube video, any channel that's ever uploaded a golf YouTube video has had, has had five of their last eight videos get more than a million views. Like that is, it is unbelievable. He's up to 732,000 subscribers. So anyways, it was just, he's killing it. And that's amazing. I'm so happy for the guy. I love Graham. He is such a genuine dude. He stayed very connected. You know, your response to my texts and <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that because he's big time and I, I kind of feel like he could definitely uh, do with stepping away from us, but he stays connected. So I appreciate that Grant, but I wanted to make this video because I know this is a topic of conversation that has come up in the past with other channels, but is also something that like, I feel like I have a unique ability to share with you guys as someone who's been doing this professionally for six years, creating YouTube videos. And obviously big nerd in this stuff. I think I can give you the most accurate estimation possible. Now, let me just say, it is an estimation. Like full caveat, obviously I'm not messaging Grant and asking him how much money he makes, that's super rude, and he would never tell me, nor would I want him to, and I would definitely never share it, nor should he, but this is just off a YouTuber's understanding. I'm gonna show you guys analytics from my channel to get a base that I'm going to compare off with his content, and we're just gonna do some simple math, and we're gonna find out approximately how much money he potentially makes, which is gonna be, I think, shock a lot of you guys. So anyways, Grand Horvath Golf right here. Obviously, like I said, all his videos have been absolute bangers. We go over to his view stats. Last 28 days, he has just about 7 million views. Now this isn't updated with his current video that he just uploaded this morning. So I'm just rounding this number up, 7 million for the purposes of calculating today, because by the end of the day, that's what it'll be at. So just so it's the most accurate for you guys. By the way, 54,000 subscribers in the last 28 days is just, he's killing it. Now, don't worry, this is not the number I'm giving you. I'm not, we're not just gonna sit here and we're not just gonna look at this and be like, that's it. Because unfortunately, this ViewStats app, which is amazing, if you guys are ever looking to see this kind of stuff that I see, it's just ViewStats.com, it was created by Mr. Beast. It's very cool. There was a Social Blade app before, but it wasn't as accurate. Uh, it also didn't show, this is a really cool feature, it shows approximations of the one attends. Um, which, you know, in YouTube speak is it ranks your last 10 videos against each other and it shows you where it ranks in that current moment. So right now, obviously his last video isn't up here yet, but his Phil Mickelson is a one out of 10, which means at this current time in seven days of being uploaded, it has more views than any of his last nine videos before that. So anyways, this number right here is calculated off of a CPM that is way too low for golf YouTuber. We're gonna get into that in just one second. So. 730,000 subscribers, six, we'll call it 7 million views for the purpose of today. Okay, how does YouTube pay you? That's a question I get all the time. YouTube pays you in a couple different ways. YouTube, the actual app, the actual platform is owned by Google. Google has Google AdWords, Google AdSense. It's a program that sells advertising across websites all over the world. And essentially what it does is it gets a hold of advertisers. It sells advertisement to these advertisers and the advertisers get to say where they want to be. From there, Google will place their ads in relevant either web pages or in this case, YouTube videos. So if you're a YouTuber and you reach a certain threshold, you can join, apply to join the Google Partner Program. If you get accepted into that, then you're gonna start having ads 
from Google, sold by Google to advertisers, placed on your content with you really having to do nothing. You can choose a little bit about like where they show up, sort of, and you can like pre-roll, mid-roll, whatever. But for the most part, you're just allowing Google to place ads in your videos. So you don't really see what those ads are and you're gonna get paid for them. You're gonna get a split of it. Google sells a CPM rate to the advertisers. And basically what that means is per thousand views, Google is going to charge the advertiser this rate, okay? There's also the RPM, which is the revenue per thousand views, essentially, which is your cut as a creator, because you're gonna get a split of that CPM with YouTube. Now it's not a standardized amount. It's not just like, you know, a 60, 40 split. It works out differently in every case based off a bunch of like really unique variables, like how like the advertiser tells what your content's like, how advertiser friendly your content is. There, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but to get some baselines, we're just gonna go look at this video right here. So this is a video I uploaded back in, I think December. We're looking at this one because it's 44 minutes in length. The longer your videos typically especially given the space we're in in YouTube Golf, your CPMs are gonna be a little higher. So for comparison's sake, we're going to this video. This video currently has 146,447 views, which you know is obviously a lot less than Grant's million views, but it's a video of mine that's a higher view count, that's a little longer, so it's a bit more comparison. So to this point, this video has made about 1,600 bucks. So that's USD, obviously, for any of my Canadian friends. 1,600 bucks. And if we go look at the revenue, that is off of a $23 or a $24 CPM. So per thousand views that this video gets, YouTube is charging $23.5 to an advertiser to put an ad on it. The revenue that I'm getting per thousand views is $11.21. So the reason why I'm showing you these numbers is because we're gonna use this as a base of comparison for Grant. However, I will say that I think that Grant CPMs are probably higher than this. I think they are because number one, his videos are like two hours long some of them. The longer the video, typically in the golf space, as long as it's still advertiser friendly and whatever, they're just gonna be able to put more ads in it because it's a longer video. So then the rate for advertising will go up and your per thousand view payout from YouTube, the RPM, will be higher. So I'm gonna guess that this is going to be a low estimate, but I would rather be on the low estimate side than like the complete overestimate side. Cause I think even with this low estimate, you're still gonna be shocked. So let's get into the math. So basically what I did was I calculated Grant's CPM. So how much YouTube is essentially selling ads on his channel for in the last 28 days based off 7 million views, okay? So we're gonna look at that number first. That number, I have an overhead document here just for the ease of looking at it. Last 28 days, there's 7 million views that's divided by a thousand because we're getting paid per thousand views. So that's 7,000 say payable units. It's one way we used to describe it. So all we do is we take a $25 CPM, which I'm just giving a rough estimate. I think his is probably higher potentially. I've seen them on YouTube. I've seen them on my own content up to like $40. YouTube golf can get really high, but we're gonna go with 25 just for the sake of like being reasonable with it. $25 CPM times 7,000, which are the units that we're able to sell because it's divided by that thousand. That's $175,000 in advertising sales on Grant's channel alone in the last 28 days. Now, how much is Grant making of that? If we take the $11 RPM that I was getting off my $25 CPM, which again, I think would be a higher number. I think he's probably getting a higher percentage of the CPMs because there's more ads going into the videos. Multiply that by 7,000, you get $77,000. So obviously you can see the discrepancy here. <laughs> this app is estimating that he made between $4,500 and $14,000 in the last 28 days. I'm estimating that his YouTube ad revenue in the last 28 days was closer to $77,000. It's crazy, right? It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Now, again, this is an estimation, but as you can see how I got there, right? Like, and I have other videos that you know I upload. I had Grant's interview that was around the same time as this and it had the exact same CPM RPM. But like I said, I've seen other videos, re many other videos reach close to this one. So I don't think that's so far off. So based off the $11 RPM, if he got, which he did, 7 million views in the last 28 days, that's 7,000 saleable units by Google, that's gonna net out to $77,000, well, 175 of advertising sales revenue and 77, that's gonna go into Grant's pocket, which is crazy. So. But we're gonna take that now and we're gonna extrapolate it over a year. So if we just go here, we can change the, the view projections or the view count, sorry, to the last year, year to date, last 365 days, we got 55.88 million views. 
Again, just for rounding sake, because today's video, I'm just gonna round that up to 56 million views. So 56 million views in the last 365 days. Now, as you can see, they're estimating the RPM or the, the yeah, the RPMs on this that Grant's making between 36 and 118. That's just not even close. But it is, again, like Mr. Beast has talked about, his, his CPMs are like $3, because he has such, what happens on YouTube, why we get such high CPMs in the golf world, those of you who are interested, we have a very niche audience relative. So when people come watch our videos, it's because they like golf, usually because they play golf and they wanna watch golf. So if you're an advertiser and you're selling a golf hat and you want to reach golfers, you're going to try to advertise on a golfers, golf YouTubers channel. You can do that. As the advertiser, you can be like, I want to be on golf videos. But what happens is because there's so many people that want to advertise in this golf space that create golf products, but there's so relatively few people making golf videos compared to say, you know, people making Mr. Beast style videos that are just non-specific. Those advertisers have to pay higher and higher and higher rates. And it's kind of like a competitive bidding system that goes up and up and up and up. So that's how we get such high CPMs. The more niche you are usually, as long as that niche is big enough that it has people selling stuff in it, which golf definitely does, your CPMs are gonna go higher. So I would argue that golf probably could have some of the highest CPMs in all of YouTube because there's just so many companies making products specifically for golfers that wanna to market to golfers. So therefore our CPMs go higher. But that's why Mr. Beast, who just makes content that's non-specific to anyone, he's only getting like $3 per 1,000 views because it's non-specific advertisers. You don't know, if you put an ad on there, you don't know if you're gonna get an eight-year-old, if you're gonna get a 56-year-old, if they're gonna live in Canada, if they're gonna live in you know, Australia. Whereas golf YouTubers, typically you're gonna get people between the age of you know, 16 and 45 they're gonna live in North America and they're gonna be playing golf and they're gonna probably spend money in golf. So you're able to really hyper target. So anyways, that's why that's so low. But we're gonna go off 56 million views. Listen, if you can do the mental math, you'll get there. But the year to date, here we go. This is the good stuff. So off 56 million views, divide by a thousand per thousand views, we get 56,000 advertising units for sale or amounts that we're charging the CPM against. $25 CPM, or multiplied by 56,000. 1.4 million in gross sales YouTube is selling to advertisers on content that's being, or on advertising that's being marketed on trans content alone. You can just do that quick math across all channels and realize what the market cap is right now on YouTube golf. It's crazy. Anyways, $11 RPM, which is again, the split that Grant's potentially getting, 6,000, $616,000 in the last 365 days Grant has racked in from YouTube AdSense alone. Again, an estimation, but I think a very potentially accurate, if not a low one. It sounds nuts, it's a ton of money, but I mean, you gotta think about it this way, like, uh, you know, uh, you take a Super Bowl ad, right? You take a Super Bowl ad, that's like, I don't know, 100 million views, and that's getting, he's got 56 million views, which is, you know, Super Bowl, I think it's like 130, they say. So let's say even that's just like a third of it, a Super Bowl ad is like three and a half million dollars, right? So 1.4 million for a third of it, that's pretty much right on par for what you're selling. And this is a much more hyper-targeted audience than the Super Bowl would be. So the advertising rates are, they're not, they, they shouldn't blow your mind that much. Like if you really think about it, like yes, that's a lot of money. And like, yes, YouTube golfers aren't like, you know, like the David Dobricks of the world who are bringing in a quarter million dollars a month, but, they're definitely, they're definitely up there. And because our CPMs are so high, we can make substantially more money at smaller levels of, I mean, that's why I'm able to be a full-time creator off this channel has what, like 35,000 subscribers. Like it, it, our CPMs are so much higher that we'll be able to make a lot more money with a smaller audience size. So anyways, $616,000. That's what I think Grant, oh, I don't know what I think. That's what the math says Grant potentially is making in the last 365 days. Now. The reason why I leave this CPM in here is because this isn't it. This is just off Google AdSense. But if you know anything about YouTube, you know that creators make the majority of their money usually, especially at the size that Grant's at, from brand deals because there's no middleman. With YouTube, there's a middleman. A $25 CPM or even a $20 CPM is a very, 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 very competitive, normal, even low, especially in this hyper niche demographic, CPM to charge an advertiser. So for example, if Celsius, who is one of Grant's sponsors, Kevin Salmon is like, hey, we want to put an ad in a video, it would not be out of the question to say, all right, cool. Like, you know, we're going to put it in the Phil Mickelson video. 
let's say that's probably gonna get a million views, which I think Grant could safely say, it ended up getting 1.5. That's probably gonna get a million views. And we want $20, a $20 CPM, which is a completely fair and normal amount to charge. I guarantee you they could charge even higher. But if we just take a $20 CPM across that same view count of having 1 million views, you can do the math, you can extrapolate that out. Now he's not selling ads in all 56 million views worth of his content, but you know, even if he's selling it in like a third of that, which I feel like at one in every three videos probably for Grant has an ad. I mean, you can just divide 1.4 million by three and then add that to the 616,000. Like that's just advertising revenue that's coming in from his own personal sales because he gets the entire say 20, $25 CPM directly to him. He's not splitting it with YouTube. So that's why creators can make more. Then obviously this year it was announced that Grant joined Primo and Grant has now an ownership stake in Primo. They just had Phil Mickelson wearing the joggers at the open. So he's definitely, I don't know if he's taking necessarily taking it. Usually if you're an owner in a smaller, newer company, you're probably not taking out a salary every month. He's probably doing that more for the long haul. So I wouldn't necessarily say you'd add that to his yearly income, but do I think it's crazy to say he's making over a million dollars a year? Nope. I don't think that's crazy. I think that is a pretty dang close estimate to how much Grant Horvath could be making per year. Again, like I said, this is just an estimate. This is just me doing some simple math, using my own analytics, using view stats totals of his view counts, and just doing some simple arithmetic to get to these numbers. But listen, that's it. That's the video. I just wanted to talk about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you mind blown? Are you, do you think it's lower than you thought it would be? I wanna hear what you guys have to think. And who would you like me to do this for next? What channel would you like me to talk about this next? It could be a fun little series. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.